Yo, do you see this chart right here? Can you relate? I can, and I'm gonna tell you exactly why and the mistakes you're making at night to fall asleep based on science. And a little bit of my own anecdotal evidence, which is not science, but you should totally try it out. This is why you're always tired. Now, I'm not a sleep expert or anything. This is just a bunch of knowledge I've compiled up throughout the years. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, read through the studies and try them out for yourself. Let's start off with the science. And so we're gonna wait for the sun to go down and I'm gonna show you guys my nighttime routine. Okay, so there's no doubt that light affects your sleep. It affects your ability to fall asleep and stay asleep. It affects your REM sleep. It's why I imagine whenever y'all go to EDC, which I've never been to, nor do I plan on going to, y'all can stay up the whole night, no problem, catch the sunrise, got all that music blasting and lights flashing at you, or it could be other influences. So here's how I sleep. I go a little crazy, okay? I used to have a bunch of chargers, Wi-Fi routers, and a bunch of things that would emit light in my room the whole entire night, and I would do anything I could to block out those lights. This bracelet's not coming off. I would even tape them. That way, a bunch of light doesn't hit my eyes, and that way I can stay asleep, get some REM sleep, and sleep better. Or nowadays, I just use an eye mask. So I use this eye mask right here, which blocks out about 95% of the light. It helps a ton. There's a lot of science that backs this up and is also super affordable. I also make the room extra cold. I usually turn it down to around 65 to 69 degrees. It gets chilly in here and there's a lot of science that backs this up on how room temperature affects your sleep. And get this, there's a lot of science regarding nightmares and room temperature. A lot of your nightmares, anxiety dreams happen whenever you get too hot. So if you're dealing with a lot of that, try and isolate that variable, make the room much colder. Now the next thing I do is something I've done since 2016 and hear this. That is white noise right there. I blast a bunch of white noise. So this is gonna drown out any outside noise that's going to wake you up. I used to live right next to the BQE when I lived in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Queens Expressway. And you know how many times honking has woke me up in the middle of the night? Ever since then, I've blasted white noise. Now I used to do it on my phone, but lately I've been using something that has changed my sleep. And that is this thing right here, the Hatch Restore 2. And that is why I am excited to be partnering up with Hatch, the sponsor of today's video. Listen, everybody knows the sound of this. Ugh. I probably just gave you some PTSD right there. And so what I'm trying to say is having a heart attack every time you wake up is not the best way to start the day. But the Hatch Restore 2 changes the game. If I make a holiday shopping video, this is going to be on that list, whether it's sponsored or not. I love this thing so much. It's changed the way I go to sleep. It's changed the way I wake up and I feel so much better. And I'm gonna recommend this to all of my friends. So let me show you how it works and explain a few things. You and I, we have not been sleeping right. Great sleep is something you have to learn. And this is literally your bedside sleep guide. It's designed for your bedside table with a clean and minimalistic look. Just take a look at it. It's got a modern contemporary look to it and it's in the shape of a sunrise, which we'll dive into that feature in a bit, but it's engineered to help you build a more restful routine and to assist with building natural sleep habits. The Restore 2 helps you form healthy sleep habits for life. It teaches your body when it's time to sleep and when it's time to rise with light and sound cues. So there is a meditation feature to it. It coaches you through meditations and mindfulness exercises, which will help you properly and naturally unwind and that's backed by science. Honestly, it's actually quite neat how it works. So as you're going to sleep, you just press the rest button and through the app, you'll have a bunch of sounds that'll help you unwind. Press it again for either white noise, light rain, or many other sounds that you can download in their library. I always have the white noise feature on because this will help drown out any outside noise that might wake me up. I've been doing this for years when I lived in New York City. I would blast white noise so I don't hear any sirens or anything crazy happening outside and I'd sleep like a baby. Now the wake feature, this is definitely the most useful thing with the Hatch Restore 2, I promise you. So you can already see the shape of the Hatch Restore 2. It's in the shape of a sunrise. And that is because there's a built-in light to it that'll slowly brighten up the room, kind of like a sunrise, which will naturally simulate a normal waking up with the sun routine. As soon as that light shines on you, it's very dim and then it's gonna brighten up and it's, this is gonna help you gracefully wake up. And then for my rising sound, I have this safari jungle jazzy type of sound. It's so much easier to wake up to rather than this. I feel like I'm going to go to war whenever I hear that. And I've just been waking up so much more refreshed, so much more gracefully. And I know every human being is going to find this useful. So take control of your sleep and wake up actually refreshed and not groggy. All you have to do is click that link down in the description. Once again, pick up a Hatch Restore 2 by clicking that first link down in the description or any of their other products that help with sleep. All of them are great. I'm definitely going to be recommending this to my friends and they aren't even paying me to say that. So thank you Hatch for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. All right, I'm gonna throw this back on because it feels weird just filming in a tank top. So yeah, the room is cold. I'm blocking out all the light I can and I don't hear anything at all. This is a recipe for great sleep, but you can still wake up exhausted and that is 
because there's something called a sleep cycle, which is just the cycle between light sleep, deep sleep, and REM sleep. You see, the average sleep cycle is about 90 minutes. This is going to be different for everyone, of course. You're gonna have to know your own body, but this explains some truth to that meme. So what you wanna do and what the sleep experts recommend is count back every 90 minutes from the time that you wanna wake up. So for me, ideally, I get seven and a half hours of sleep or six hours of sleep. Anything in between, I'm not gonna feel the best. Now, if I could, nine hours would be the goal. There's a ton of studies on pro athletes sleeping nine hours and them having better shot percentages and being much quicker. It's a very interesting study. And if I have to stay up, well, looks like I'm getting four and a half hours of sleep because there is science out there that says waking up at the same time every day is much better than sleeping the same amount of hours, but your wake up time is variable. It's random. Obviously you want to strive to get a lot of sleep, but try and time that with a sustainable wake up time, which is why I'm recommending the hatch restore too, because it actually helps with that. You'll be able to set your bedtime and wake up time through the app so that the sunrise hits you at the same time every day. All the science points to consistency because this is going to affect your circadian rhythm and disrupting that just affects your whole entire sleep. Now, what about naps? Why do I feel tired whenever I nap? Well, there's good naps and there's bad naps. You see, there's this thing called sleep inertia. If you end up sleeping over one sleep cycle, your body literally thinks you're gonna sleep the whole night, which is why whenever you disrupt a long nap, you feel even more exhausted. And that's why you feel like trash whenever you wake up backed by science, but let's go to another source called Trust Me Bro. Now, the first mistake you're making, in my opinion, of course, is you're just not getting enough activity throughout the day. Your body just has no reason to be tired. Now, Johnny, aren't you just a fashion channel? Yes, I am, but if you don't get enough sleep, it's going to affect your mood and your energy. You're gonna look like a scary person to be around. And one of the things about pulling off a good fit is confidence and good vibes. Sounds a little woo-woo, but that's facts. So here's an example. You guys ever sleep like a baby after a long road trip? Or as another example, I just moved recently and I have been exhausted trying to unpack and, and organize my space. I'm sleeping awesome because all of this uses a ton of mental bandwidth and it's a lot of physical activity as well. And you guys know me already. I work out about five days a week. And so that is what you're trying to strive for on a daily basis. Not reach that level of mental exhaustion every single day. That's probably not sustainable, but it's just something you can strive for. Because as much as I've been loving these games lately, if I spend all day playing those, I'm not going to sleep well. My sleep's going to be trash because all the day was was just a bunch of dopamine release and just being lazy. So in my head, what reason does your body need to rest for if you've just been chilling all day? So I believe everyone should get some sort of physical activity daily, whether it be lifting weights, hitting the bag, skating, whatever is your thing, bouldering maybe. I strive to get that kind of activity at least five days a week. Now mentally, I think you should have a creative hobby, something that's going to use up your mental energy that's not taxing like Excel sheets. There's studies about that that's not good for your sleep, but something creative. If you're not a creative person, one of the things I used to do is I would rearrange my entire place. This takes a lot of creative energy, mental energy, and not only does this spruce up your space, you're gonna sleep really well. This next one is something I definitely found helped me out, and that is practicing gratitude. Now this sounds pretty woo woo, but the truth is if you have a roof over your head, you have a bed, you have nice sheets, you can wear an eye mask at night, and you're in a quiet neighborhood, you have it pretty nice. And it's something to be grateful for, because I found that the times I couldn't sleep was when I was the most cynical and when I was the most ungrateful. So maybe you should try that out. Some people think too much at night and that's why they can't sleep because they're thinking about how much they're thinking about stuff and that's affecting their sleep and they're not going to get enough sleep and that stresses them out and they don't end up sleeping. I'm telling you, if you try all those out, I think it might help. All right, fellas, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Those are just some tips that have helped me out. The science part is legit though. <laughs> but trust me, bro, it's just my personal experience. You might find it helpful. So yeah, fellas, until then, stay fly. Check out Hatch. It's a great holiday gift. Deuces.